But I have to say that the golden key for getting to another individual's loyal relationship and heart is your willingness to open vulnerably to another human. And that's not always easy or comfortable for everybody. But for instance, when you're having a dinner party, it's one thing to pull a group of people together for dinner. It's another thing to have those people engineered when they leave to give a damn and care deeply about each other because you were the host. What does that mean? Let me explain two different dinner parties. One dinner party is just that. I'm going to pull everybody together that seems to be interesting to me. We're going to bring their spouses and we're all going to have a lovely conversation. But tell me generally what kind of conversation topics ha are there had. You talk about your kids, you talk about work, you talk a little bit about what's going on in the environment. I don't know. I'm trying to say where, how deeply you scratch the surface. Or even just think about last night. What were the conversations you had last evening? Now, if I were showing up at a dinner table and it was my desire to engineer a group of individuals giving a damn about each other, being a loyal community with and for each other, the conversation I would have is so simple. It's, the, it's what I would call as, is opening the key to vulnerability with a simple personal professional check-in. A couple of weeks ago, I had um, a group of individuals out in Los Angeles. They were all either existing clients or prospective clients. CEO of Hewlett Packard, CEO of Flex, the CEO of all these companies from the Bay Area. And I, I brought two or three individuals who were the leading thinkers in AI. Andrew Ang, who led the AI program at Google, etc. Now, they all thought they were coming for content. But any of those individuals could have gone online or gotten McKinsey or gotten anybody to show up in their desk to give them a cut on what the future of AI is. What I had the conversation at the table do was two things. I said, by the end of tonight, what we're going to talk about is where you're scared the most in terms of your capacity to effectively engineer your organizations with AI. I want to go deep. I want to go vulnerable. But before we go there, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go around the horn and I want to hear from everybody what's going on in your lives really quick, personally and professionally. And then I started. I said, let me start. I'm going to start with my personal. Um, good news is on a personal relationship front, I fell in love during the pandemic. Um, thank God for Swipe Right. It's fantastic. And so that's really going well. But I've got six boys, um, all of them from foster care and adoption. And... My youngest child is quite off the rails right now, and um, he's, his, his engagement with our family is basically non-existent. Um, we don't see him, and it's my, it's my prayer that someday uh, he'll be coming back into our family as an engaged part of the family, but for violence and for anger and for a number of reasons, it's just not a safe place to go right now, and it eats me up all the time. Um, so on a personal basis, that's what I'm struggling with. And on a professional basis, um, because I have fallen in love with somebody who wanted to retire two years ago, but I forced them not to, um, one of the things I did is I, we, got, we bought a house in San Francisco, so I figured if we increase the burn, then I can, it, you know, not, not have as much desire to have retirement. Uh, my partner is at Sequoia and was ready to check out, and I was like, you know what, I'm ready to keep going, and that, there's that distance. And so I hired somebody to take over as CEO of our company. And after a year and this economy, I realized that this wasn't the right person. And we parted ways. And that kills me because my entire future was engineered around being able to go 50% and spend a different way of living. And here I am back to square one in many ways and having to re-engineer a different type of company and as the CEO again for the next sprint. Um, and a little afraid because maybe my, my partner won't celebrate that and won't tolerate that. And what does that mean to my personal life and what mo matters most to me right now? So that was my personal professional check-in. Now, what you noticed was that when I, when I did that personal professional check-in, I led with vulnerability. I didn't say to everybody, hey, everybody, we're going to go around and we're going to be vulnerable, Right? I just said, we're going to go around, we're going to get to know each other a little bit, we're going to do a personal professional check-in, and my personal professional check-in led with vulnerability. And by virtue of that, one person after another, personally and professionally, opened up. We heard about parents struggling with Alzheimer's. We heard about marriages that were struggling. We heard about 
in, in really difficult things that you would have never shared with your peers as CEOs of massive companies of where you were struggling inside of the business. And interestingly enough, we barely ever got to the AI topic. But what we did was, by the time we left, the emails and the texts afterward on the next day, because I had set up a, a text chain with everybody, were so warm and so generous and so intimate and so connected that this group of individuals I created in one night a group that was a lifeline group for each other. And they, could, and, and they still are connecting with each other today. 